This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are to rejoice in it and be glad. Thank God for life, health, and strength. Thank God for giving us another chance that we are able to come into his house today. We are in God's sanctuary, and we are not in the mortuary. So we give God glory, and we certainly give God praise for, for another, another chance. I want, to thank, I want to thank God for your pastor uh, for extending this opportunity. He is a, a friend of our church. Um, he is a friend of mine. And then I want, to thank, I want to thank each and every one of you at First Baptist uh, for receiving me on a continuous basis. I, I thank God for the privilege, and I thank God for the opportunity. It is, it is an honor, and it is, it is a humbling experience to be able to come and share with you my convictions of Catholic. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. Isaiah chapter 26 today. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 26 today. Isaiah chapter 26 today. Isaiah chapter 26. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my, and my redeemer. Isaiah chapter number 26. In 2023, First Baptist, if you want to survive as well as thrive, you need to be prayerful, full of prayer. There is never time in your life, there's never time in my life when I don't need to be prayerful. You need to be prayerful when things are going good. You need to be prayerful when things are going bad. You need to be prayerful when it's up. You need to be prayerful when it's down. You need to be prayerful when you have money in your pocket. You need to be prayerful when you're broke. There's a joke. You need to be prayerful. If you're going to survive and if you're going to thrive in 2023 not only must you be prayerful but in this life you've also got to be patient listen i hate to tell you but we don't serve a microwave god but we serve a god that listen is an oven god my grandmother would say, you can't hurry God. No, you just have to wait. you got to trust him and give him time, no matter how long it takes. He's a God you can't hurry. He will be there, don't you worry. He may not come when you want him, but he'll be there always on time. So you got to be patient. you got to sit back. you got to relax. And you've got to let God do his work. You've got to be prayerful if you're going to survive and if you're going to thrive in 2023. But you've also got to be patient if you're going to survive and thrive in 2023. But then if you're really desiring to survive, whether you are a millennial, whether you're a baby boomer, whether you're Generation X, whether you're Generation Z. Listen, you've got to be prayerful. You've got to be patient. But then listen, you've got to be positive. There's so much negative things that is going on around us. All you got to do is look on your phone. Turn to Facebook, negative. Look at channel 8, channel 9, channel 10. For those of us that have cable, for those of us that have able, negative. Listen to the radio. Somebody over here being killed. Somebody over here is being adopted. Somebody else is being robbed. Negative. But if you are going to survive and if you're going to thrive in 2023, 
you've got to make a decision in your mind and in your heart that you're going to be positive. And even when there is nothing going on positive around you, David says these words in Psalms, in, in, in 1 Samuel chapter 30. He says, in the midst of all that was going on around me, he says, I encouraged my own self in the Lord. Sometimes you got to pat your own self on the back. Sometimes you've got to be your own cheerleader. Sometimes you've got to say, I can go ahead. Self, you can go ahead. In fact, I remember, I remember um, when the Buccaneers had a real major losing season. I guess y'all probably saying, well, that's quite often. Okay. Um, one of the reasons they kept on going is because on the sideline, they had some cheerleaders. Listen, First Baptist, to be positive, you have to be your own cheerleader when other people can't be your cheerleader. But then as we get to God's word today, in 2023, if you want to survive and if you want to thrive, you've got to be prayerful. You've got to be patient. You've got to also be positive. But listen, you've also got to have peace. Peace in your heart and peace in your mind. Peace in your heart and peace in your mind. But let me tell you something. Peace is not about, a peace is not based upon what you have. There are a lot of people that has land. There are a lot of people that have money in Wachula, mid-Florida, Sun Coast, and under their bank, under their beds, under their mattress. <laughs> but they don't have peace. A lot of people have education. They have more degrees than a thermometer. but they don't have peace. So peace is not based upon what you have. Peace is based upon who you have. Let me give it to you. In, in Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter number nine, verse number six, the word of God declares, but unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Listen to these words. The Prince of Peace. So if you have Jesus, you can have peace. And listen, if you don't have Jesus, if you walk in the church today and you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, today is a good opportunity for you to get to know the Lord for yourself. So that when life is turbulent, when life is topsy-turvy, you can still have peace on the inside. Well, do you know, it says in verse number three, two words, we can have just any kind of peace, but we can have perfect peace. Praise his name today. Per 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 perfect peace. And you, you can have perfect. Need to be here. You can have perfect peace. 
Not only was life in style, it's not perfect, but you can have perfect peace even when life is not problem free. Isn't it good news? was going to be perfect. Peace I give unto you, not as the world give it, so I give it unto you. Gospel John, chapter number 14. I'm going to have this perfect peace. And, and Pastor Lancaster, you, you really don't know what I have to deal with. I've got, to, I've got to deal with a career that is unpredictable. I've got to deal with children that are off the chain. Somebody said amen. <laughs> pa- Pastor Lancaster, I, I need peace. Well, Listen, the Lord brought, let you leave your house to come to his house to let you know that you can, I can have perfect peace. Well, well, Pastor, show, show, show it to us. Show it to us. If we are going to have perfect peace, look at verse number three of the 26th chapter of Isaiah. The 26th chapter of Isaiah. And we're going to have perfect peace. Verse number three. Thou will keep him. Put your name there. We see that pronoun, but, but put your name there. Thou will keep Timothy Lancaster in perfect peace. Put your name there. Fill in the blank. Thou will keep Timothy Lancaster, keep him in perfect peace. Watch this. He whose mind is stayed on him. Well, number one, Pastor Lancaster, how am I going to have perfect peace? If we're going to have perfect peace, our focus has to be on the Lord. Our focus has to be there as we go through and we will go through as we go through the vicissitudes of life, as, as we go through different stages as we go through different seasons in our lives, it can get easily disturbing. It can get easily discouraging. And if you be honest, oh, But there are some Peters in here. And the truth is, if my focus is not right, I can be Pastor Peter. You can be Brother Peter. You can be Sister Peter. Okay? Let me give you some words. Peter. that he's going to get on the boat with Jesus. And Peter sees the waves. Peter sees the wind. Peter says, listen, I'm with Jesus, but I can't go because on the wind and the waves, he gets out of the boat. I was saying that he starts to sink. 
to slip. All because he's got distracted by what he is going through. There may be someone here today. I know we're just in the first quarter of 2023. But if you be honest with yourself, some things I've gone through has literally caused me to get distracted. My attention has been on everything else, and my attention has been on everybody else but the Lord. And listen, you know, you know, you know you're looking in the wrong direction when, when you're looking backwards. You know your attention is in the wrong place when you're looking down. Watch what David says. David says, I will lift up my eyes. Unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help coming from the Lord. So, so you got you gotta change, you gotta change your focus. What 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 is your attention on? Is your, is your attention on those that are around? He sits high and he looks low. He knows what you're going through. Listen. If you put your attention on him, he will give his assistance to you. So, if I'm going to have perfect peace, I got to make sure that my focus is on him. Pastor Scott wife, um, recently I had to go get um, some new glasses. And, um, you know, when you got to go for your eye exam, that's a tricky experience because they take you to this dark room. She says, Mr. Lancaster, take your glasses. Took off my glasses. Click here, click there, click there, click there. Can you see? A little bit. Don't squint your eyes. Click, click. Can you, can you see? And I said, yeah, that seems to be much clearer. Looks, looks better. So now I've got to wear progressive lenses. But let me show y'all something. I gave her my insurance card, paid the co-payment, and the optometrist, the eye doctor, she walks out of her office. She says, oh, one thing, one, one more thing. The Lord, you may have to do like I did. Optometrist, be your own optometrist. Be your own eye doctor. Go to Walmart. Go to Sam's Club, get you some lens wipes, and clean your glasses. And listen, you just may be able to start seeing things much more better. Because we get distracted. All the film, all the dust, all the everything else that's on our glasses causes us to see stuff that ain't even there. Well, I hope this is blessing somebody. If I'm going to have perfect peace, what, what, what else? That, that, that sounds good, Pastor. My, my focus got to be on him. But, but listen, to, listen to what God's word has to say in verse number three again. That I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind, my focus, is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Who is the thee? Trust ye in the Lord forever. That, that's a good place to say amen. 
So, li- li- listen, listen, listen. If I'm going to have perfect peace, my brothers and sisters in the balcony, if, if we're going to have perfect peace, first of all, our focus has to be on him. But then, guess what? Our faith has to be in him. Our faith. Our faith. Who, who are you trusting? Do you know what? If you look in your Bible, in verse number three, verse number four, you will notice that trust has a suffix E-T-H at the end. E-T-H means on an ongoing basis. It means continuously. So therefore, there is never a time in your life that you should not be trusting in the Lord. Trust in the Lord forever. And can I tell you something? Trusting in the Lord still works. David says it best. Trust in the Lord. He tells his son, trust in the Lord. Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 5 and verse number 6. Trust in the Lord with all of thy heart. Lean not. That's a guideline. Unto our own understanding. In all of thy ways, acknowledge him. Watch the guarantee. He shall direct your path. Listen, I love that, that, that I can trust the Lord forever. I love that. I love that fact that I can trust the Lord forever. I, I can trust the Lord no matter who they are in Tallahassee. You can trust the Lord no matter who they elect in the White House. You, you, you can trust the Lord no matter, listen, who, who they elect in Bowling Green. You, you can trust the Lord no matter who's the bank president. And I see one of the head tellers back there. You can even trust the Lord no matter who's counting the money or if there is no money. I remember when I was much younger, when I was much younger, um, um, we would ride our bi- bicycles in my grandmother's neighborhood. And because we rode the b- bicycle so much, and one of the first things that started falling apart was um, we didn't have a kickstand. So, what we would have to do, now y'all don't tell Pastor Scott I did this. What we would have to do is when we would go into the corner store, so that our bi- we, we would have to lay our bicycles down on the ground, or we have to lean it against the wall in, ho- in order to hold the bicycle up. Now the question is, the question is, What are you and who are you leaning on to hold you up? If you keep leaning um, and letting your proverbial bicycles hold you up instead of the Lord, they can easily fall. They can easily fail. But I know someone. He is God all by himself. That if you lean on him, he will not let you fall. And he will not let you fail. You, l- listen, you can't keep leaning on mama. You can't keep leaning on daddy, your sister, your brother. Not, not that they don't want to do it, but sometimes they can't do it. But I know someone that is awesome. I know someone that is amazing. And I know someone that is able that you can always lean on. You can rely on him. You can depend on him. And listen, even when you feel, and the key operative phrase is, even when you feel 
He's not coming through for you when you want him to come through for you. Keep trusting him. Feels so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word. Gotta trust him. But then, if I'm going to have perfect peace. If you're going to have perfect peace, problems all around you, predicaments, perplexities here, perplexities there. If I'm going to have perfect peace, if you're going to have perfect peace, first of all, the word of God declares to us that we got to focus on him. Not only do we got to focus on him, but our faith has to be in him. But then thirdly, there it is in God's word. The same one that our focus is on, the same one that our faith is in, trust ye in the Lord forever. Why? For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. You can have perfect peace when you find out what you need from him. When you find out what you need from him. Okay, listen. In the text, it shows us that first of all, the Lord is able to provide for you strength. Okay? I, I want you to know that not only is the Lord able to provide for you strength, but the Lord is also able to provide for you security. He's able to provide for you strength. He's able to provide for you security. Um, and he's able to also provide for you serenity. Why, why is he able to provide for you serenity? Why is he able to provide for you security? And why is he able to provide for you strength? Because he knows that there is going to come a place in your life. There's going to come a point in your life when you really are going to need it. Well, I don't know about y'all, but when I have problems, when I have pains, when I have predicaments that are out of my control, if I'm not careful, I can get easily weak. If, I, if I'm not careful, I can get easily worn down. But even when I am weak and even when I am worn down, if I go to him, he will give me the strength that I need. So, so if you came to church today and you're not as strong as, as you, as you want to be, I, I want y'all to know today that, that First Baptist, he... He will, he'll give you strength. L listen to what Isaiah 40 declares in verse 28. Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the creator, the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that has no might, he increaseth their strength. Even the young men shall faint, and the young men shall utterly fall. There it goes. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Um, I'm, I'm closing. But I, I need to ask y'all a question. I mean, I know we just had Christmas. But how many of y'all got a real TV? A, a real TV. I mean, it's, it's okay. How many of y'all got a real TV? It's, 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 nothing, it's nothing unspiritual by having a TV. But how many of y'all got a real TV? <laughs> no, see, y'all got flat screens. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm talking about a real TV. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm talking about, I'm talking about those, those TVs that at the bottom, uh, it, it had certain numbers, 13, 12, uh, 8, see, see uh, th thank you, uh, a real 
a real TV, and then they had a top screw. Thank you. Had a real screw, and and you you would you would you would dial back. I'm talking about a real TV where you had the 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 rabbit antennas, and in and in and in order to 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 make sure that uh, your 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 picture was much more clear, you had to kind of get up. I'm talking about before you had a remote. <laughs> but on that real TV, it showed pictures, it showed cartoons, it showed things that you don't see now on those flat screens. You got to have two by Netflix and YouTube. But there was a there was a cartoon character <coughs> named Popeye. <laughs> My piano player, come on, come on. I'm I'm closing. That there, there was a there was there was there was Popeye. And my man, come here for a minute. Come here. No, 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 not, not, not you. My man right there. Come here. Come here. Yeah. Come here, Papa. Come here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come, come here. You good. Nah, nah, I'm going to give you a license to be the preacher today, but you ain't going to get paid, okay? Uh-huh. Okay, okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Papa. Papa. Papa, come here, come here. Yeah, come here, come here, come here. Papa, Papa, I'm, I'm closing, I'm closing, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm finna, I'm out. Come, come here, you see me right here. Yeah. Papa had a little conflict because both Papa and Brutus loved olive oil. Every now and then, Papa will have to come against Brutus. In this life, I don't care how pretty olive oil looks, you're going to have to come up against your Brutuses. But man, when Brutus thought that he was going to get the best of Papa. Papa, open up a can of spinach. <laughs> and Papa got the strength that he needed to deal with the bruises. So not, so no matter what you come up against, keep your olive oil. You gotta go home with it. Olive oil, dude. Let me see. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Keep keep your olive oil. Keep, 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 keep olive oil. But you're going to need, you're going to need your spinach. What's your spinach? What's my spinach? I'm going to need the Lord to be my everlasting strength. And to be my everlasting strength, I ain't got to go take no vitamin this and vitamin that. He's accessible, he's available, and you can attain it only from him. He wants to give you peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. You better, you, you looking at me? But you better eat your spinach if you want to be a winner. If you want to get the victory, you better get your, watch this. 
If you want to get victory, you got to have you some Jesus. Thanks be unto God who has given us the victory through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Can't have victory, can't win without him. And he the one when you get weak. You get weak sometimes. You get worn down sometimes. Go to the Lord, man. Go, 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 go to the Lord. Don't, don't, don't call your friend. Go to the Lord. Don't, don't. No, you don't need to make an appointment with pastor. You need to make an appointment with God. And you can have perfect peace. And when everybody thinks that you're supposed to go crazy for Cocoa Puffs, but you're able to walk through those doors with a smile, still give God glory, and still give God praise, you'll be able to say like the hymn writer, when peace like a river attendeth my way, and sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou has taught me to say, it is well. With, it ain't well on the outside, but he never promised it would be. But it's well. It's well. I got to pay for tuition in Harvard, but it's well. Insurance going up. Taxes are going up. You say it is. <laughs> but it's well. Don't always meet budget. But it's well. With my soul. Stuff ain't always well. Situations are not always well. But it is well with my soul. Take your spinach. No, you ain't you don't you ain't gotta go to dollar dollar store to get the, the spinach. You don't gotta go to Walmart to get the spinach. Just have a personal relationship with God. And you'll get all of the spinach that you need. So as I leave you today, I need you to ask yourself, do you want to be a spiritual papa? And do you want to be a spiritual person that has strength? And even when you feel like your strength is gone, he'll replenish it. And he'll reborn it. And he'll renew it. God bless you. And God keep you. Is our prayer. Perfect peace. all stand.
Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor, for those great words this morning. Can we have an announcement video today? Okay. We're going to play the announcement video, and then we'll have our closing prayer. Join us today here at First Baptist Church of Bowling Green, where we strive to be Christ-centered, gospel-driven, joyfully united, and prayerfully obedient. If you're new with us online, let us know in the comment section. And if you're new with us in person, we invite you to fill out an information card that's found in that pew back in front of you. You can fill out the front side with some information about you. And then if any of you have prayer requests or praise reports, you can fill out the back side of that information card. You can put it at the boxes at every exit, and if you leave a prayer request, the staff um, finds great joy in praying for those. One way that we're being prayerfully obedient here is by partnering with Church of the Highlands for their 21 days of prayer and fasting. Monday through Friday here at 7 a.m., we show the live stream of that 21 days of prayer. And then on Saturday, it begins at 10 a.m. If you can't be with us in person, you can watch each day for 24 hours. So let's say tomorrow you're going to watch 21 days of prayer. You have from the end of the live stream, which is going to be around 8 o'clock, until the next morning at 7 to watch that live stream. And then after all of the 21 days of prayer is over, you can revisit those days when they post all of them um, on their website. But we invite you to join us. It runs through the 28th of this month, so we have one week left. And we would love for you to join us in being prayerfully obedient in this way. We are excited. As of right now, we have a team that's in Ecuador, and the updates have just been phenomenal. God is working. People are coming to know Christ and accepting him as their Lord and Savior. And it is amazing what's being done there right now. And so that team is going to arrive back here in the States on the 25th to be in prayer for their travels and as they finish wrapping up the ministry that they're doing there in supporting Paco. Then next Sunday, which is our fifth Sunday, we are going to have a fifth Sunday luncheon. We invite you to bring a dish to share. If you can't, we still invite you to hang out and eat with us. Um, it's a great time of fellowship right after the morning service. And then that day, our fifth Sunday outreach is going to be the laundry mat ministry. And so that's going to run from 4 to 5 p.m. on Sunday next week. And then if you'd like to contribute, and give to that ministry, you can give quarters to anybody on the missions committee, which is Wendy Helms, Wendy Johnson, Olga Ward, Bruce Durant. And then um, if you don't want to do quarters, you can always make a donation um, saying local missions. So that is a way that you can support that ministry. And then obviously you can show up from 4 to 5 next week and go join them as they actually communicate with people and try to share the gospel um, and support people. And then, lastly, grab a bulletin before you leave. There's more information in there about everything that's going on. Um, we want to invite you back for tonight's evening service and then our Wednesday night services this week. We're so glad that you joined us today, and we hope that you have a blessed day. Let's all stand. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you once again for this beautiful day of corporate worship. Lord, everything that we learned about today, everything that we sang about today is about you, Lord, because you are God. You are the answer. As Pastor Lancaster brought out, Lord, the only way to peace is through you and your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you that you loved us so much, Lord, that you died, uh, died for us while we are yet sinners. Now, Lord, as we go our separate ways, pray that you be with us, be, keep us safe, Lord, and bring us back together safely tonight to worship you again and to hear what you have to say to us tonight, Lord. We pray all these things in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Dismiss, shake hands.